Hey everyone, so here's the deal. I'm a web developer and a Linux sysadmin, and I'm not too far from 50. Now life's handed me some curveballs, right? ADHD, a little open heart surgery last year, so it's safe to say I got my own set of challenges, right? And it's probably not my fault I had to be resuscitated at birth, which might have caused me to have ADHD. Seriously though, I've been battling a lot of challenges my whole entire life, but guess what? I'm still here. Somehow I'm still 100%, which is a little bit of a miracle. Might actually make a video about it someday because, for real, it's a total miracle that I'm even here. Or maybe just stubbornness and grit. Either way, I, I, I don't know. But I'm not slowing down. Now, if you're here, I'm guessing you want to know how to keep it together when you got ADHD as an adult. Well, spoiler, it's all about daily routines. Yeah, routines. Not the glamorous jump out of the plane kind. The unglamorous, just get her done kind, which is usually what kind of works, right? So here's an illustration that I have, right? Becky Hammond, who is kind of a breakout player in the WNBA and who's kind of shorter than most of the other players in her league, right? And she later became like an assistant coach in the NBA and head coach in the WNBA. She's a remarkable person. But the one thing that really kind of resonated with me with her was... She has the same exact routine for her free throws, right? She'll stand in the same exact place behind the line. I mean, same exact place. She'll dribble the ball the same amount of time. She has this routine. It's like, have I done this? Check. Have I done this? Check. Have I done this? Check. Now I'm ready to throw. Swish. And that's kind of what you have to do as an adult with ADHD. You kind of have to do that essentially but with systems and daily routines so systems are kind of self-explanatory like if you lose your keys often you have to have a system for remembering where you put them right or something like this so that you don't lose your keys anymore one thing that's aggravating and i think anyone with adhd can relate with this maybe is i basically have to stage things before i leave the house so that i don't forget them Right, or else that's exactly what I'll do. I'll forget them. And a lot of times I'm staging things so that I remember them. My wife doesn't understand this, right? Um, it looks like probably that like I have my thumb completely up the you know what, like I'm just completely in outer space. But the one thing I'm doing is I'm concentrating on staging the right things because especially if I remember to bring like more than three or four things, right? And she'll move something. And it may seem insignificant. And when she moves it, I won't remember it. And so, more than once, I've had to drive back to the house, you know, for something that I had remembered. But I got knocked off my game because she doesn't understand, because she doesn't have ADHD. And it can be rather comedic at times. Now, let's keep it 100 here, right? I'm not immune to my vices. Right, the other night I got drunk. Not the slob kind, like that's stupid, right? But I had a couple of beers, I got a little buzzed, felt great till the next morning. Now, I didn't have a hangover, but it did knock me off my game, my daily routine. Turns out I can't do things like I did in my 20s, but you know what? In my 20s, I didn't do this. In my 20s, I wasn't a highly effective person, a high performer, right? Back then, I would just down a case of beer and show up the next day, guns blazing. And sometimes I would be lost and, you know, trying to find myself. But most of the time I could kind of make it work. These days it's just not happening, right? That's why, I, so why am I even bringing this up? It's simply to show you what maturity looks like. To acknowledge when I'm not staying on my routine because I won't be that highly effective person that I want to be. I also know there's probably someone out there who's also wrestling with ADHD who could use a hand or a map or something. And uh, maybe they just need to be reminded what true maturity looks like. All right, routines. It's not revolutionary, not exciting, not sexy, but it's what keeps me from going off the rails. First thing I do every day, I read my Bible and I pray. Now, I'm not here to preach to anyone, and I'll be the first to admit that my behavior does not always mirror my convictions. More than once on this channel, even, I've let the F-bomb slip my tongue. 
Why? Why? Probably because I have ADHD, actually. And sometimes I just get so aggravated with a problem that that's usually my only recourse of action. But that time I say every morning, it's kind of grounding. And for me, the day I met Jesus was probably the most important day of my life. It's more important than my marriage. And the day I got married, more important than the day my son was born. And the reason is, is because without that day that I met Jesus, I wouldn't have the marriage I have. I wouldn't have the son I have. I probably wouldn't be here. That's real talk. So let me lay it out to you. ADHD isn't just being hyper or distracted. This thing's got levels, right? Three levels, three modes, really, when it comes to energy. And if you're an adult with ADHD, it's imperative that you know these levels, that you recognize them, and you recognize which mode that you are in. The first mode is Superman mode. This is like when I'm untouchable, right? Blazing through projects new ideas popping left and right it's like i'm invincible but here's a kicker superman mode does not last usually like it might last a couple of weeks or a couple of days when you get older it lasts about three days and then crash okay but it's kind of funny because when you are in superman mode you're completely deluded right you're delusional and you actually have like this recurring thought or at least i do where I'm like, if I could do this forever, I would be unstoppable. And that's usually right before the crash. And that takes me to snail mode. And snail mode, this one is very dangerous. I think people have committed suicide because of this mode. And it's the exact opposite. The energy is at rock bottom. You don't want to get out of bed. And it's more than a slump or a crawl. Or yeah. Sometimes you just kind of want to die, if I'm being perfectly honest. Now, medium mode. This is where I try to live at most of the time. It's steady, productive, sustainable. The problem is I get delusional, like I mentioned before. And I start thinking I'm Superman again. I dive head first into overdrive and then end up in the ditch. This is real talk, right? And this is a vicious cycle. And I go through this over and over again. I will be in Superman mode again. And I will be in the ditch again. So what do you do when you're in snail mode? I think this is probably the most important time, most important part of this whole video. What do you do when you're in snail mode? This is where you need a baseline. Like you need a bare minimum bar that maybe you're just going to get outside for 10 minutes or answer three emails or go for a walk. I think it's different for everyone. I'm not a therapist. I can't really tell you how to do this. I'm just kind of giving you kind of a... A lifeline you know kind of like you know a road map essentially right but personally i find making thumbnails weirdly therapeutic so sometimes i might just spend the whole day making thumbnails right i'll work on a video script or do some lighter task that isn't mentally taxing because that is what i'm essentially doing recharging my mental battery look at it like this right have you ever been at work when someone was injured or not feeling their best? Something like this, right? What well, usually happens, right? Their boss puts them on light duty. So in the essence, when you are in this snail mode, you're just on light duty. You just have to be on light duty. That's all. Now, a few other things that uh, help me stay ahead of the game. Balanced diet, prayer, meditation, and regular exercise. Not every day, but close. And I may even make a video on meditation someday because this thing has been a game changer for me. I discovered this in my mid 40s and it's not mystical, but the focus it gives me, yeah, it's worth it. Now, if you're not taking care of your body, mind and spirit, your ADHD is gonna control you instead of the other way around. And that is just the bottom line. So let's just talk organization because with ADHD, staying organized is survival, right? This, you, it's so vital. For me, it's Obsidian. This isn't an ad for them though, but I wouldn't mind if it were. <laughs> but Obsidian's been huge. I got my son hooked on it too. He's also got ADHD and he just loves it. But 
this app lets me throw ideas down and actually find them later, which is the best system I've found so far. These are the daily routines that keep me firing on all cylinders. It lets me keep up with people half my age. Look, I may not have the energy I had in my 20s but with a solid routine. I can probably outwork most Gen Zers. It's not glamorous, but it's effective. And that's what really matters. So if you are struggling with ADHD and you feel like you can't keep up, get your routines locked down. Don't skip out on the basics and don't be afraid to slow down when you need to. And hey, if I can do it, anyone can. If this video has helped you, please consider subscribing. I'll keep sharing what's working for me, ADHD and all.